Now, from the makers of Cold Water Irma... In Emma Peel's apartment, she poured coffee for John Steed. I thought you were trailing Jeff Cop. Oh, I was. But he's in a board meeting until six. There seemed little point in squatting outside the factory until then. Don't worry, I'll be back on the beat before he's through. How was United Automation? Impregnable. Admission by appointment only. But I have the appointment and the punch card, which gets me in to see Dr. Armstrong. Punch card? How does it work? Well, I shall know till I get there. But well, why did you come back? To collect one briefcase and slip into clothes that have a more literary sheen. A John Steed, journalist. And collecting some gen on automation in modern society, you know. Will the machine supplant man? Or woman, for that matter. And will it? Steed eyed Mrs. Peel's shapely figure as she sat down and crossed her silken legs. Not from where I'm sitting, Mrs. Peel. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. this story in which John Steed and Emma Peel continue their investigations and Steed receives a deadly gift. John Steed took himself off to the offices of United Automation. He had consulted Roger Gilbert, a forthright and friendly scientist and administrator who had given him the full background on Dr. Armstrong who managed the firm. Dr. Armstrong was an ex-ministry man and something of an inventor. From what he'd been told, Steed formed the hunch that Armstrong was all-important and connected with the deaths of the four men who appeared to have been chopped down by a karate expert. Steed was looking forward to the meeting. The offices of United Automation seemed deserted. There was no reception desk, no one on duty. Steed walked across to what appeared to be a clocking-in device. A small notice read... Insert your appointment card here. Oh, with pleasure. Part of the wall slid away, and Steed found himself facing an open lift. An automatic voice said, Enter the lift, please. Steed looked around with interest. The lift was lined with padded leather and included rows of buttons with one marked assembly shop. Steed was tempted to push the button, but before he could make up his mind, the lift stopped. The doors slid back and revealed a library. Books lined three walls from floor to ceiling. The fourth wall consisted of a large electronic computer, impressively arrayed with complex dials and indicators. Above the desk of the computer was a wide radar scanning screen and two television monitoring screens. As Steed moved over to these with a great deal of interest, the door near the computer opened. Dr. Armstrong entered in a special automatic chair, which carried him swiftly the length of the room and stopped behind a large desk. Mr. Steed? Yes. Uh, Dr. Armstrong? Please stay where you are. My infirmity in no way impedes my activity. Armstrong made a few adjustments to dials on the armrest of the chair. The chair slid neatly forward and came to rest in front of Steed. Armstrong extended an arm from under a travelling rug and proffered a fleshy hand. How do you do? I'm afraid you'll have to be brief, but uh, please sit down. Steed looked around for something to sit on. A leather chair suddenly appeared from the floor. Uh, this is the age of the push buttons, Mr. Steed. My factory is entirely automated. Well, the appointment card is rather neat, but couldn't it be duplicated? It's recoded for every visitor. You've no staff at all? Only for maintenance and for sales. 
As a journalist, you'll appreciate that we human beings are, well, fallible, temperamental, and so often unreliable. But a machine such as this chair, however, is obedient and invariably more competent. Machines do go wrong. No, indeed. So one builds each circuit in triplicate. Failure can be rectified automatically without the risk of, shall we say, hemorrhage or surgery. A perfect, trouble-free labor force available at one's fingertips, as you can see. Armstrong's podgy fingers lifted the arm of Steed's chair, revealing a set of controls. He pressed various buttons. Security. Steel shutters over the doors. Efficiency, comfort. Lights glowed from above. Cold air swept into the room. And relaxation. Very restful. But that music wasn't composed by a computer. It will be, in time. We've machines that not only work, they think. Uh, come to the computer. I take this punch card. It is programmed for a complex equation. We drop it in and press a button. There, the answer. Steve gazed down at the strip of undecipherable punch tape that gushed from the computer. I'll uh, take your word for it. Correctly programmed. The machine could answer all questions on finance, science, and even military or political matters. It could supplant the human brain entirely. Is that for publication? I'm theorizing, of course. The problem is size. But with the development of new circuit elements, it can only be a matter of... Uh, excuse me. Of course. Steed got up and moved down the computer as Armstrong picked up a small internal telephone. Yes? I have the information. Go on. An offer is expected from industrial development. But Lambert is dead. They have no one else to negotiate. Someone else has turned up. A man called Steed. John Steed. What? Turn on your TV scanner. Is this the man in the room with me now? Yes, yes. That's the one that followed me in. That's him. Right. Leave this to me. I'll see you in a moment. Well, Mr. Steed, I hope this has been of interest. Oh, it has, it has indeed. Well, I never let my visitors leave empty-handed. Here, a pen. Armstrong held out to Steed a distinctively shaped fountain pen. We hope to market these very shortly. A solid ink. A solid. The temperature of the hand electronically feeds a stream of carbon particles into the nib, emitted only on contact. Cannot leak or dry out. Refilled once in ten years. The felt pen manufacturer is going to love you. <laughs> you accept the gift? Of course, thank you. It's been a most informative visit, Doctor. My pleasure, Mr. Steed. You'll find the lifts are open. Goodbye. After Steed had left, the other door opened and Benson entered. What was he doing here, Doctor? Snooping, undoubtedly. Well, why let him go? Benson, you're employed to take orders, not to give them. I may be confined to this chair, but I'm quite capable of dealing with Mr. Steed. But first, we've got someone else to deal with. Prepare for target assignment at once. In the office of Jeffcott Products, Jeffcott himself was also on the telephone. He was making a few notes on a pad as he spoke, using a very distinctively shaped fountain pen. Yes. Yes, fine. Yes, I've got all that. Mm-hmm. That'll be okay. Goodbye. Jeff could replace the telephone and lean back in the chair, toying with the pen. Then he rose to his feet, slipped the pen into his top pocket, switched off the table lamp and prepared to leave. Outside, in Emma Peel's car, Steed said, He's taking his time. Hmm. That light went off some minutes ago. No other exit. Well, there's the warehouse, but his car's parked out front. Let's go and have a look inside, shall we, Mrs. Peel? Well, there's no future in this. How do we get in, though? Knock on the door or break in? A keys, Mrs. Peel. Mm -hmm. Keys? All locks are illusionary. Remember my sleight of hand? Come on. A few minutes later, Steed was working on the front door. If it's bolted from the inside, that's not going to do you a great deal of good. He hasn't come out. It's reasonable to assume that it's just from this one lock. There we are. After you, Mrs. Peel, you know the layout. Thank you. Better try without any light. The passageway here leads down to the showroom. Most of the front section is given over to electronic toys. This way. I wonder how much of this toy business is genuine. How much is a cover for other activities? Well, toys and karate don't seem to go together. Or do they? 
Jeff Cott is a man of many interests and... Steed, who had been following Mrs. Peel through the darkened showroom, had been careful not to disturb any of the toys, but he tripped. His foot shot out and hit a large doll, knocking it over. I, I love you. I love you. I really do. Oh, I love Steed, you, you never I told me before in so many words. Oh, that devil just shut the thing up. <laughs> Let me do it. Only girls should play with dolls. Here, give it to me. Oh, very effective. Come on, but be careful this time. We could have disturbed... Wait. Mrs. Peel pointed at Jeffcott's legs protruding from the back of the desk. Steed moved over, swinging the desk lamp downwards. Oh, looks as though he's been hit by a five-ton truck. But who could... I mean, he was a karate expert. Well, apparently not expert enough. Steed, look at that wall. They both stared at the far wall. There was a large splintered gap in the wooden partition leading to the warehouse. It was exactly as though a man of at least seven feet tall had walked straight through it. King-sized karate, Steve. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers, brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omos.